fellow aviators, lovers of aviation history, aviation enthusiasts, welcome to yet again another series of A Date with the Aero Archives and our sub-series of Dancing with the Aero Daredevils. And today, the spotlight is going to be on Lincoln Beach. Before we continue, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell another friend that Captain Amwa is here with yet another banger. An airplane in the hands of Beachy is poetry. His mastery of the bird is a lovely sight to behold. This is a quotation from Orville Wright, the first aero daredevil in aviation history. Because like I told you, in 1904, January 1904, the floodgates of aero daredevils were opened and more guys came onto the scene between 1904 and 1914. As and when Beachy came along with what he did, which we are going to look at in a minute, uh, this is what the Wright brothers had to say of him. So let's go to the objectives of the lesson today. Here again, too, we are still showcasing more of these American Aero Daredevils and linking it to 17 December 1903 when the Wright brothers did what they did that opened the floodgates of Aero Daredevils in 1904. Then we're going to look at a brief bio of Lincoln Beachy. In fact, I had to cut his bio short because he had too many feats, too many Aero Daredevil feats that if we had to explain, we will be here all day. Okay, so we'll do a brief bio on Beachy and we're going to link his events to today and why we are admitting him into the Hall of Aero Daredevils. He was born 3rd March 1887 and died 14th March 1915. He was born in San Francisco. The father was a soldier. At the age of 13, his father as a seven in the forces went blind, so he was not able to continue looking after Beachy. And young Beachy at the age of 13 went into bicycle repair and later advanced into motorcycle repair shop. Now, his first love with aviation, his uh, ingenuity, he was able to team up with a balloonist and they came up with their first um, aircraft called the Californian Arrow. He was not satisfied with that aircraft as far as their performance was concerned. He was not satisfied after performing it and flying it. He didn't really feel so satisfied. He wanted something challenging. He wanted a more adrenaline pumping thing that creates some, you know, if I just say, a bit of surprise and everything. So, to cut his long story short, he also joined another club, if I saw another fraternity, who were into fixed wing aeroplane, but they still would not let him fly for one reason or the other. So what he used to do was that he was working as a mechanic. So in the night, what he would do is that when everybody's asleep, he would go into the hangar, in quote, steal the aircraft, fly it at night, and learn how to practice the fixed wing on his own. This is about this is what we mean daredevil in at the night. You know, flying at night and flying at day have two different concepts in terms of vision and perception and everything. But this is how he slowly got himself into fixed wing. So it so happened that as he was doing stuff like that, he was gaining little experience on how to fly fixed wing because the flight of his aircraft that he built, the Californian Arrow, and what he was trying to fly were two different things in terms of the flying philosophies and everything. It so happened that that company went into an air show and for some strange reason, the pilot who was supposed to uh, fly that day was absent and uh, Beachy, for lack of a better expression, stole himself and went to fly uh, that particular aircraft and did so many wonderful things in the air show. It was one of his first feats. I'll just summarize a little bit of his feat. The second feat was he invented what we call the loop flight. Loop flight is almost like you fly, you turn the aircraft over its belly, that's belly side up and come back to normal attitude. That's a lot of, if I say skill and a lot of practice and a lot of adrenaline pumping. He virtually invented it. He performed at an air show and he was also someone who broke an altitude record at a certain time. That's the early part of 1911 of just filling his aircraft with fuel and just flying up the sky for about two hours just to see how high his aircraft could go. And after two hours, he was able to break an altitude record of 11,000 feet uh, minimum at uh, two hours. He was just flying and as the aircraft came back into the ground with his loop flying skills and recovery from aircraft spinning skills, he was able to always, anytime that he wants to test for altitude and he flies up and the aircraft runs out of fuel and it starts plummeting, he had a way of saving it. So we could say he was uh, also the first guy to fly the Niagara Falls, as you can see on your uh, map in Canada. Because there was also a prize, a competing prize for the one who was able to fly the 
Niagara Falls. That's a $20,000 price reward, which he, he competed and won. So three main things about him, breaking altitude records, inventing the loop flying. Today, it's a maneuver that is done in the military and also uh, crisscrossing the Niagara Falls. This is just the tip of the iceberg about this amazing guy called Lincoln Beachy. The last sad end of his story was when he went into this, if I could say, alternating retirement mode. So let's say, after saying, look, I'm done with this, I've set this record, I'm going to bed. Then he hear, hears of news of somebody who outdid him. The next you see, out of retirement mode, he's going back to recompete with the guy. As soon as he wins over him, he says, okay, enough is enough. I'm going back. Then he goes back into retirement. And the next thing you hear, there's this news posters around, flying around that this guy did this, this guy did the same thing. And it's like, wow, this guy is outsmarting me. No way. I'm going back. The next thing you see, he unlocks himself out of retirement mode, out competes, he wins, he comes back to retire. He had this cycle of life until one day when he was flying out to do a bit of loops in an air show, if I could say. Aeroplane crashed into the glaciers and um, that was the end of Beachy. So we'll get into why was he an aero daredevil. So like we said, all these flights that we see today, they are so seamless. So somebody's gonna ask, big deal. If he crossed Niagara Falls, big deal. I mean, 11,000 feet of altitude, big deal. And to loop, I share the military guys say, big deal. Yeah, big deal. Because guess what? Today, we have so much hindsight, so much foresight, and so much insight whenever we go out there for any operation. High altitude climb, today we have aircraft that can go as far as 45,000 feet. Crisscrossing the Niagara Falls, no big deal. We have flights that even can start in London and end up in Sydney, almost a 20-hour journey non-stop. Today, things are just happening so seamlessly because a pilot goes to work, like I said, first of all, to his operations control center. That's a nerve center of the whole airline operations. He is properly briefed, you know, on weather, properly briefed on the aircraft status, properly briefed the airport itself that he's going to, things to expect and not to expect and things like that. So he goes on board the aircraft, he already knows. All he has to do is do his checks on the aircraft and make sure that it is in accordance with the airworthy prescriptions. That means every checklist that he goes through, if he's satisfied with it, all he has to do is give the order, passengers board, aircraft doors closed, aircraft is dispatched, you are flying over the Niagara Falls. Big deal. Today, nah. In those days, yeah. Why? Because all these things that we said BG did, it was a dead of infant. How can you say you are just filling your aircraft with fuel? Question, where are you going? Are you going to another city or something for business or for pleasure or whatever? No. Where are you going? Are you, do you have a military operation? No. Where are you going? Is it a charter flight? Where are you going? Are you flying tourists around? No. I just want to see how high my aircraft can fly to. Just why you filled it with fuel. I mean, can you imagine? And you fly two hours into the sky. The daredevilian thing was to outcompete each other on speed, altitude, and distance. So many daredevils came for different purposes. It's very interesting to know that, uh, yes, he did not have any hindsight. He didn't have any insight. And here again, on my other videos, I'll be talking about flight philosophies and things. We'll talk about pressurization. As and when you are climbing up into the, I mean, to altitude, pressure, air pressure is reducing. It has its, its, its effect on the human being itself, on the aircraft skin itself. Or, and even on the engines itself. Now his idea is that when I fly and I run out of gas, technically when you run out of gas, at that moment in time, the only thing you know is that the aircraft is coming down like a rock. Today we have so many aerobatic lessons where you can recover from spins, recover from all sorts of aircraft, what you call unusual attitudes and things. In those days, the only idea he had was the aircraft is just going to come down like a rock. And so what? But he invented his own maneuver to recover from the spin as the aircraft spun into the ground and plummeted into the ground. He had his own maneuver without hindsight, foresight, and insight. He didn't have aircraft manuals, which are safely stored in the cockpit when you go there. He didn't have checklists to deal with abnormal situations, 
checklist to deal with emergency situations, checklist to deal with normal situations. He had none of this. But he was able to tell the world that certain things are possible. Today, you go into some uh, uh, flying schools and all they do is aerobatics. It's just aerobatics, how to push the aircraft to the limits, flip it up on its back, come back again to usual altitudes, spin it around, you know, do all sorts of funny things. Some even use it to write words in the sky and everything. It's all because of Beachy. All these things he did, crossing the Niagara Falls, the loop, and the altitude record he broke in his time, 11,000 feet, were done without any hindsight, without any foresight, without any insight. Today, all these things are done because we have so much, so much information. And even the Flight Operations Control Center is not only there for to brief pilots. As soon as we take off, we still communicate with them, pass certain information to them, and they track us like any other tracking device, and they know where each aircraft is of the airline at any point in time T. I mean, we have the Flight Operations Control Center as our very best friend, but yet they were able to push a lot of barriers to make flying comfortable today. So those of us flying, especially those over Canadian airspace, always thank Lincoln Beachy, because had it not been his feet, nobody would have had the courage to continue. So obviously, there is no way we can deny him into the Hall of Aero Daredevils. I think we've enjoyed ourselves uh, just listening to Lincoln Beachy. The pictures and the slides show on your screen say it all. Catch me again whilst we look at other Aero Daredevils.